Hey everyone, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by our own Frank Stanfield, who's here to take us through the waiver wire as we look toward week number 12. What's happening, Frank? Not much, Greg. The New York Jets, one of the hottest teams in football right now. Look at this, a two-game win streak. A little bit more on the Jets coming up here, but I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastically as we look toward our fantasy playoffs, and we need to find the players that will help us win it all, and that starts this week. So let's begin at the quarterback position where we go. Right back to your New York Jets, we start with our quarterback, and that is Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold coming off the first four-touchdown game of his career yesterday against the Washington Redskins, finished as a top-eight quarterback for fantasy football purposes. And honestly, you know, he should have three good games in a row. He's had at least two good fantasy games in a row, but if you remember that game against the Miami Dolphins, he threw a touchdown to Ryan Griffin, that play got overturned, and then the very next play, he threw an interception. So I think Sam Darnold's actually playing a little bit better as of late, getting it done through the air, and that's the way to attack this Oakland Raiders defense they're allowing the fourth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks this season they've allowed 24 touchdown passes through the air that is the third most so I'm looking at Sam Darnold the way that he's playing right now the offensive line is not a good one but he is taking advantage in those short to intermediate routes using Jamison Crowder a ton Demarius Thomas is playing well Ryan Griffin we'll get to him a little bit later on uh, he's also playing well so I'm looking at this Jets offense and the fact that they are starting to click finally they've had some good matchups and they're going up against the Oakland Raiders in week 12 I expect some points in that game Greg Sam Darnold should be able to get the job done for the New York Jets, continue his hot streak and their hot streak as well, facing an Oakland team that has been vulnerable. Hot, but vulnerable. We'll see if Sam Darnold gets the job done this week as you pick him up off the waiver wire. But if you don't like Sammy D, you want to go in a different direction, where else can we turn to, Frank? Well, look at Jacoby Brissett, who just returned from injury. Now, he didn't have the greatest game in Week 11, but let's take a look at the matchup here. Going up against the Houston Texans on a short week, Thursday night football, a divisional game here, a very important game for the standings of the AFC South as well. Now, the Colts could look to run the ball here in this spot, but, you know, they just lost Marlon Mack to injury. More on that a little bit later on as well. But in the first meeting between these two teams, Jacoby Brissett back in Week 7 threw for over 300 yards, threw for four touchdowns. The Texans are allowing a ton of fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. That is a secondary that can be taken advantage of. We just saw that in Week 11 against Lamar Jackson, maybe the league's MVP right now, not just the running back. Lamar Jackson threw for four touchdown passes against the Texans. This defense is allowing the ninth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. So I'm looking at a few things here. The fact that Marlon Mack is injured. This is a divisional game. It's really important. Jacoby Brissett has already played well against this secondary. And again, it is a really good matchup. So uh, if you don't want to go with Sam Darnold, if you're a little bit more worried about that Jets offense, I think Jacoby Brissett is a great play heading into Week 12. Short week for the Colts and Jacoby Brissett playing against Houston on a Thursday night, but it's a game they must win in that AFC South division battle, and there won't be any Marlon Mack, we assume, which means Jacoby Brissett is going to be relied on heavily. If you don't like Sam Darnold, Brissett is a fine pivot. And speaking of that Colts team, without Marlon Mack, who broke his hand, they're going to have to turn elsewhere. Jordan Wilkins, he didn't play this past week, so the Colts turn to Jonathan Williams, back from the dead, Frank. Jonathan Williams, the ghost of Jonathan Williams, is back. And Marlon Mack is dealing with a fracture in his right hand. And that is the, the hand that he uses to cover up the ball and carry the football. So I'm not expecting him to play at least in Week 12 on the short week going up against the Houston Texans. And Jonathan Williams looked really great in this game, Greg. He played 29 snaps. Those were the most snaps among Colts running backs in Week 11. He had 14 total touches and 147 total yards. Remember, he is playing behind one of the elite offensive lines in the NFL, in the Indianapolis Colts, and I think that they could take advantage, again, of this matchup, right? This Texans defense just all around. We thought they were good in, uh, at stopping the run heading into Week 11, and then the Baltimore Ravens happened. I mean, the Baltimore Ravens did whatever they wanted against this Texans defense, but they entered Week 11, the Texans defense, sixth in run defense DVOA. The Baltimore Ravens just ran for 236 yards. Mark Ingram also had two receiving touchdowns 
as well. So I'm looking at Jonathan Williams as the running back to own here. Greg, pay attention to Jordan Wilkins. He wasn't active in week 11. He was dealing with an ankle injury. You know, if he is active on Thursday night football, that will change things a little bit. But I think Jonathan Williams proved himself, proved himself to this Colts coaching staff as well. And now that they know they can rely on him a little bit, I think that he is going to be the running back to trust in the spot. And if you play in PPR leagues, take a look at Naheem Hines as well. Naheem Hines, obvious, an obvious PPR option, but Jonathan Williams got the bulk of the carries when Marlon Mack left this game yesterday. And if you think what you saw uh, between the Ravens and the Texans on Sunday was no fluke, then Jonathan Williams is going to run wild against Houston on Thursday night. We like Brissett. We like Williams. you got to imagine Frank's going to take the Colts on Thursday. But there's another running back that's worth picking up this week, and I feel like it's like the fifth Lions running back we're recommending to you. But it's Bo Scarborough time, man. He has had the most carries yesterday of any running back outside of Carrion Johnson in a single game this season. Bo Scarborough coming over from the Cowboys, signed off the practice squad last week, and he was the starter, and he ran wild. I understand the Lions uh, aren't necessarily in many games with a backup quarterback in Jeff Driscoll, but Bo Scarborough, clearly the man right now in Detroit, and he's out there on every waiver wire, Frankie. You've spent your money on Ty Johnson. You've spent your money on J.D. McKissick. Now is the time to spend your money on Bo Scarborough. Fool me once, fool me twice, whatever the saying is. We are picking up Bo Scarborough because he is going up against the Washington Redskins in Week 12, who allow the seventh most fantasy points to opposing running backs so far this season. I think... The way that the Lions are viewing this backfield right now is that they have Ty Johnson and they have J.D. McKissick, who are fine scat backs. They are change of pace backs. They are players that they could bring in on third down. But they needed an early down runner, and I think that that's what they have in Bo Scarborough. This is a massive human being. Six foot two, over 230 pounds. You mentioned the carries that he had yesterday, Greg. 14 carries for 55 yards and a touchdown. He played on 49% of the Lions snaps in week 11 as well. So I think now that they are viewing Bo Scarborough as that early down runner, the one that they can use between the tackles if they fall behind, yes, they'll get some of those third down scat backs on the field. But I think, you know, with this injury to Matthew Stafford, the fact that Jeff Driscoll is their starting quarterback right now, they probably want to rely on the run a little bit more, and they're going up against Washington again. So Dwayne Haskins has not looked great. This Washington team has not looked great. So I would expect the Lions, even if Driscoll is their quarterback, to be playing with a lead heading into Week 12, which will lend itself to Bo Scarborough as well. So I know you've spent a lot of money on Lions running backs already so far to this point. Let's do it one more time. Greg, when it comes to Scarborough, all you've got to do is Bo leave. That's it, man. You just got to bully when it comes to Scarborough and hope that it was not another Ty Johnson. It's not another J.D. McKissick. It's not even another Paul Perkins. You got to hope Bo Scarborough is the man in Detroit going forward. Get on his back. Ride him home. Believe. Moving on to the wide receivers, Frankie. As good as the running backs are this week and the tight ends, actually. Wide receiver, not nearly as deep. So we go back to the Hunter Renfro well. With Oakland, Derek Carr has looked much better as of late, and Hunter Renfro has been a primary beneficiary of that. Yeah, Greg, we spoke about Hunter Renfro a few weeks ago, but that ownership percentage is still not high enough for Renfro at this time. And he's been consistent, especially from a PPR perspective. He has at least four receptions in four straight games. No, he's not going to light up the scoreboard. He's not going to have, you know, big plays down the field. But again, they are still bye weeks heading into week 12. There's four teams on a bye, four very good teams. So if you need a bye week replacement in your PPR leagues, Hunter Renfro is that guy. We, we know all the jokes about how many years he played at Clemson, but now he's actually a legitimate weapon for... John Gruden and this Oakland Raiders offense. A very good Raiders offense as well. They are top five in the NFL in yards per play on offense. And they've got a good matchup going up against the New York Jets here heading into week 12. The Jets allow the second most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. We even saw Dwayne Haskins throw multiple touchdowns yesterday. Dwayne Haskins, not a very good quarterback. Derek Carr playing like a very good quarterback behind one of the better offensive lines in the league. Yes, they're going to get Darren Waller involved. Tyra Williams will get involved as well. But I'm looking at those targets for Hunter Renfro. They have been consistent. The receptions have been there. This is the safety blanket for Derek Carr right now. Really, really good matchup going up against the New York Jets, Greg. I agree. It's a really good matchup uh, against New York. I started Terry McLaurin yesterday in my league against the Jets. He had a big catch between Haskins. Even worse than I thought. And I thought he was terrible. So that's all you need to know about Terry McLaurin. But Derek Carr is not awful. He's going to be able to get the ball to his wide receivers. That includes Tyrell Williams. It certainly includes Hunter Renfro. 
He's up next in Oakland, which means he should be up next off your waiver wire. Another wide receiver that is out there in fantasy football leagues right now is Taylor Gabriel, who had a nice game last night at the Chicago Bears. I don't know who the starting quarterback is going to be in Chicago. But I do know that Taylor Gabriel is probably part of the solution. Well, Greg, we'll just cross our fingers now and hope that it's Chase Daniel because Mitchell Trubisky has really limited the upside of all the pass catchers for the Chicago Bears so far this season. 14 targets on Sunday Night Football for Taylor Gabriel last night going up against the Los Angeles Rams. He only you know, converted that into seven receptions for, for 57 yards, but he's had at least six targets in three of the last four games, so he is getting more involved. The next two matchups for Taylor Gabriel and the Chicago Bears passing attack are very good with the New York Giants in Week 12 and the Detroit Lions in Week 13. Let's focus on that Giants matchup first and foremost. I mean, this is a defense that is allowing the fourth most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers so far this season. So I would expect Allen Robinson to have a big bounce back game against the Giants. But given the fact that Taylor Gabriel is seeing the targets, again, at least six targets in three of his last four games, and this is a really good matchup, we're looking at Taylor Gabriel as a legitimate bye week replacement heading into week 12. If you're desperate, you don't have a guy like Tyreek Hill next week. Taylor Gabriel is a fine replacement because... I'm not saying he's Tyreek Hill, but he does a little bit of everything, right? He's a fast guy that has the ability to stretch the field. And if Chase Daniel's out there, we may get one of those opportunities. Taylor Gabriel, a fine bye week replacement, as Frank said. As I mentioned, the tight end position, not a terrible spot this week if you're looking off the waiver wire. And we go back to the New York Jets, where we waited and we waited and we waited for Chris Herndon. That ship has sailed. But Ryan Griffin, quite all right, Frank. Let's just view all the production that Ryan Griffin is giving us right now as Chris Herndon, and I think we'll feel a lot better about it. But overall, you're right, Greg. Ryan Griffin has been awesome the past month or so since Sam Darnold has returned here yesterday against Washington. Caught all five of his targets for over 100 yards and a touchdown as well. He's playing a ton of snaps. He's running a bunch of routes so far this season as well. He is on the field a lot for the Jets, and they need pass catchers, right? They have Jamison Crowder. Demarius Thomas is a fine player, but he's older at this point. And based on the Jets' offensive line, they don't have enough time to let those routes develop down the field for Robbie Anderson. So really, he has been an afterthought in this offense. It's a lot of short, intermediate throws. That's where Jamison Crowder and Ryan Griffin come in the mix. He's been targeted in the red zone a lot as well. You know, about a month ago this time, against the Jacksonville Jaguars, he had a two-touchdown performance against the Jaguars. Should have had a touchdown against the Dolphins, but that call got overturned as well going up against the Oakland Raiders once again in Week 12. And I think that we're going to get some points in this game because both the Jets and Raiders' defense are not good ones, specifically through uh, through the air and with the pass. So I, I'm looking at some points in this game. The Raiders allow the fifth most fantasy points to opposing tight ends as well. Everything is adding up to Ryan Griffin having a great game in Week 12, Greg. Absolutely. All the pieces make sense for Griffin to go off in this one. Sam Darnold has relied on him constantly since returning to the starting lineup. I think Ryan Griffin is an Excellent tight end pickup, really, the rest of the way, and maybe the tight end that you've been looking for. But if for whatever reason you don't want to own Jets on your team, I get it. Maybe you want to go in a different direction. Frank told you last week about Dallas Goddard, and he scored a touchdown. But you didn't listen. He's still out there in way too many leagues. Frank, why do you like Dallas Goddard this week? Greg, we like Dallas Goddard every week, and the reason being the Philadelphia Eagles just don't have a lot of pass catchers in this offense right now. We've seen the viral videos about Nelson Aguilar not being able to catch passes. We were actually reminded of that in Week 11 when, of course, he dropped passes. So this offense is going to go through Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard and Miles Sanders. They just don't really have many other pass catchers. Alshon Jeffrey is banged up. Deshaun Jackson has landed on IR as well. And it's a really good matchup for Dallas Goddard heading into Week 12. They're going up against the Seattle Seahawks, a team that has allowed the ninth most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. Dallas Goddard has scored a touchdown in three of his last four games. Yes, it's annoying because if you can just combine the production of Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz, you probably would have a top three tight end on your hands, maybe even the best tight end in all of football. But as of now, you're starting Zach Ertz, and I think you're starting Dallas Goddard the base, based on the way he's being used in the red zone and the matchup against the Seattle Seahawks in Week 12, Greg. I like the matchup for sure with Dallas Goddard in this one against the Seahawks. And I also have to say, Ben Watson, if he's out there, I know he's like 87 years old, but he was very involved in this Patriots offense. If you're desperate, Ben Watson, another option to go along with Dallas Goddard.
That time of the week, Frank, for your streaming defense of the week. Who do you like? Greg, I don't know what the Atlanta Falcons did on their bye week back in week nine, but whatever they did, keep doing it because their defense has been amazing since they've returned. If you remember that week 10 game against the New Orleans Saints, they limited the Saints to just nine points. That was the first time in Drew Brees' Saints career since he's been the quarterback of that team that the Saints did not score an offensive touchdown in a game. How did the Falcons follow that up? Well, all they did was brutalize Kyle Allen in week 11 where they had five sacks, four interceptions. I mean, this is a very opportunistic defense right now. And get this, Greg. They're going up against Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Bucks in Week 12. It does not get much better than this. Look, Jameis Winston, he is a turnover machine. At this point in his career, I don't know that any team, any coach, is going to be able to salvage Jameis Winston. He throws way too many interceptions. He throws off of his back foot. He makes a lot of bad decisions overall. It's It feels like he has fumbled at least once in every game since he's been in the NFL. So based on the way this Falcons defense is playing right now, they're getting after the quarterback. They are creating sacks. They are creating turnovers. It does not get better than this matchup with Jameis Winston going up against the Bucs in Week 12, Greg. Frank's right. Jameis Winston is a turnover machine. How many times yesterday did you see him throw with his left hand? That's an auto interception for a team that's been so much better defensively since their bye. We'll take the turnovers, get the Atlanta defense in there against Tampa Bay. That's going to do it for us here at the FanDuel. Hurry up. I appreciate the time, Frankie. Good luck to everybody on their waiver wire. Tomorrow, I'll be back with J.J. Zacharyson as we tell you who to buy or sell. Enjoy Monday Night Football tonight, and we'll see you tomorrow.